customers to share in the economic benefit of the works they create. I thank the committee for their time and work today and look forward to your questions. Thank you. We will now go to Robert Malcolmson from BCE, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, honorable committee members. My name is Robert Malcolmson. I'm Senior Vice President of Regulatory Affairs at BCE. Thank you for your invitation to provide Bell's views on copyright reform that will help ensure artists and content creators are paid for the work they create. Bell is, lar is Canada's largest communications company employing 51,000 Canadians and investing $4 billion in advanced networks and media content last year. We are also a key supporter of Canada's cultural and democratic system, investing approximately $900 million per year in Canadian content and operating the largest networks of both local TV and local radio stations in the country. As a content creator and major economic partner with Canada's creative community, we share an interest in protecting the economic model that supports our cultural industries. I look forward to sharing this perspective with you. In our presentation today, we will focus on the impact of organized content theft. This issue is fundamental to the topic the committee is studying, because no matter what remuneration model you adopt, creators can never be fairly compensated if their work is being widely stolen. There is an emerging consensus among creators, copyright owners, legitimate commercial users, and intermediaries that large-scale and often commercially motivated piracy operations are a growing problem in Canada. Piracy sites now regularly reach up to 15.3% of Canadian households through widely available and easy-to-use illegal set-top boxes. This is up from effectively zero five years ago. In addition, there were 2.5 billion visits to piracy sites to access stolen TV content last year, and one in every three Canadians obtained music illegally in 2016. Each of these measures has also grown significantly over time. According to recent research conducted for ISED and Heritage, 26% of Canadians self-report as accessing pirated content online. TV piracy in Canada has an estimated economic impact in the range of $500 to $650 million annually. In light of these concerning trends, we believe it is necessary to modernize the Copyright Act and related enforcement measures to meet the challenge posed by global internet piracy. To be clear, protecting creators in this way does not mean targeting individual Canadians who access copyright infringing material. Rather, it means addressing the operators of commercial-scale copyright infringing services. It is these large infringing operations that harm the cultural industries that employ more than 600,000 Canadians, account for approximately 3% of our GDP, and tell the uniquely Canadian stories that contribute to our shared cultural identity. With all of this in mind, we have three recommendations. First, modernize the existing criminal provisions in the Copyright Act. Criminal penalties for organized copyright crime are an effective deterrent that do not impact individual users or interfere with legitimate innovation. The Act already contains criminal provisions for content theft undertaken for commercial purposes, but they deal with illegal copying, while modern forms of content theft rely on streaming. These provisions should be made technologically neutral so that they apply equally to all forms of commercial-scale content theft. Second, increase public enforcement of copyright. In jurisdictions such as the UK and the United States, law enforcement and other public officials are actively involved in enforcement actions. We recommend that the government should create and consider enshrining in the Copyright Act an administrative enforcement office and should direct the RCMP to prioritize digital piracy investigations. Third and finally, directly empower either the CRTC or the courts to order intermediaries to contribute to remedying copyright infringements. All players in the ecosystem have a role to play in promoting compliance with the rules that support the appropriate remuneration of creators. Early this year, an unprecedented coalition of creators, broadcasters, and other industry players called Fair Play Canada filed an application with the CRTC seeking to require internet service providers to disable access to the most egregious piracy sites. Earlier this month, the CRTC recognized the harm being caused by piracy, but determined it did not have the statutory jurisdiction to grant the coalition's application. This, could, this committee could recommend that the Telecommunications Act be updated to provide that jurisdiction to the CRTC. 
In addition, a new provision could be added to the Copyright Act that would apply more broadly to intermediaries such as ISPs, web hosts, domain name registrars, search engines, payment processors, and advertising networks. In practice, this would mean adding a section to the Copyright Act that allows a court to issue an order directly to, for example, a web host to take down an egregious piracy site, a search engine to delist it, or a payment processor to stop collecting money for it, or, to or a registrar to revoke its domain. While financial liability for these intermediaries is not appropriate, they can and should be expected to take these reasonable steps to contribute to protecting the integrity of copyright that is essential to all remuneration models for creators. Thank you for the opportunity to present our views, and we look forward to any questions you may have. Thank you. So now we will go to Rogers Communications with Pam Dinsmore and Christina Milborn, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Pam Dinsmore, and I am Vice President Regulatory Cable at Rogers Communications, Inc. I am here with my colleague, Christina Milborn, Director of Copyright and Broadband at Rogers. We appreciate the opportunity to share our views with you today. Rogers is a diversified Canadian communications and media company offering wireless, high-speed internet, cable television, radio, and television broadcasting. We support a copyright act that takes a balanced approach to the interests of rights holders, users, and intermediaries, thereby optimizing the growth of digital services and investments in innovation and content. As a member of both the CAB, Canadian Association of Broadcasters, and the Business Coalition for Balanced Copyright, we also support their comments in this review. While both the INDU Committee and the Heritage Committee are dealing with Copyright Act reform, we understand that this committee's focus is on increasing remuneration to artists, creators, and rights holders for the use of their creative works. Fair compensation for creators is key to ensuring the continued health of the Canadian media landscape, and we believe we are doing our part to ensure that creators are paid for their work. For example, in our capacity as a broadcaster, a BDU, and an ISP, Rogers contributes to the compensation of artists in the following ways. We spend $900 million annually on the production of Canadian programming, and each year we remit copyright royalties for the music in specialty and TV everywhere streaming services, as well as approximately $25 million annually in copyright payments to compensate creators whose programming is retransmitted in the distant <coughs> signals we distribute. The importance of these contributions and royalty payments cannot be overstated. However, there is leakage in the system. As we stated before the INDU committee, we have watched the rise of streaming stolen content on preloaded set-top boxes with deepening concern. In our view, the proliferation of unlawful IPTV streaming services and preloaded set-top boxes is inextricably linked with decreased remuneration for creators. For instance, it has been estimated that streaming piracy is resulting in approximately $500 million of lost subscriber revenue to the Canadian television industry. This means that for creators, on this $500 million of lost BDU revenue, zero copyright royalties are being paid to rights holders for programming and distant signals, zero contributions are being made to the Canada Media Fund, and zero programming contributions are being made for Canadian productions. The Canadians are increasingly, and often unwittingly, consuming stolen content online is borne out by recent studies. For example, Sandvine, a Canadian company that conducts network analytics, reported that in 2017, roughly 15% of Canadian households were streaming stolen content using preloaded set-top boxes. These boxes, boxes access an IP address that provides the stream. While illegal downloading remains a major problem for rights holders, illegal streaming has become the primary vehicle by which thieves make the stolen content available. We have taken action to address this growing problem using the existing remedies under the Copyright Act, but these remedies are insufficient. We therefore propose the following changes to the Act. First, the Act should make it a criminal violation for a commercial operation to profit from the theft and making available of rights holders exclusive and copyrighted content on streaming services. In our experience, the existing civil prohibitions are not strong enough to deter this kind of content theft. Second, the Act should allow rights holders to apply to a court for injunctive relief against any intermediary which forms part of the online infrastructure distributing stolen content, 
including ISPs, domain name registrars, search engines, web hosting services, and content delivery networks. For example, a rights holder should be able to quickly obtain an order from a court to require an ISP to disable access to stolen content available on preloaded set-top boxes without concern that the operation of Section 36 of the Telecommunications Act might impede this effort. Currently, the existing judicial process available to rights holders is too time-consuming, too expensive, and too multifaceted to be effective in a world where stolen content can be shared around the world with the click of a mouse before a court has an opportunity to provide relief against copyright infringement. The Fair Play Coalition, of which Rogers is a part, explicitly requested that the CRTC create an agency for the expedient adjudication of online piracy disputes. In denying the Fair Play application, the Commission specifically pointed to the Copyright Act review as the right venue for considering this issue. In our view, it is now incumbent on this committee to seriously consider that request of rights holders in order to preserve the healthy operation of the Canadian broadcasting system. In addition to these proposed amendments addressing illegal streaming, we have two further suggestions that, if implement, in, implemented, would benefit creators. First, amend Section 19.3 of the Copyright Act to create a more advantageous royalty split between artists and record labels. More specifically, change the 50-50 split to a 75-25 split, for example, in favor of artists. This was a suggestion made to the INDU Committee last month by noted copyright lawyer J. Kerr Wilson, who underscored that such an amendment, if implemented, would result in the immediate enrichment of creators without threatening the radio industry. Second, augment the resources of the Copyright Board to increase the expediency with which it releases its decisions. Last year, within the context of the Copyright Board consultation, the BCBC introduced a number of suggestions to improve the operation of the Board. We would direct this committee to that document in order to ensure that Canada's rate-setting body continues to keep pace with the rapid progression of technology so that creators can receive remunerative payments within a reasonable amount of time. These are our brief comments. We would be pleased to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now we will start the question and answer period, starting with Mr. Breton. Yes, good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know if you need your, uh, your headset for the translation. Are you okay? Est-ce que, est que la traduction fonctionne? Is the interpretation working? Do you hear me? Test, test. This is the English Channel. Is the interpretation working now? Okay, great, thank you. My first question is for you, Mr. Sparrow, and Ms. McAllister. You say that there is a value gap between uh, the, the value of what you create and what you are paid for in the Canadian sec in the Canadian and world music sector are there is there a similar value gap in the in the t TV and film industry in Canada and if so what are the consequences of this value gap for the Canadian sector you can either of you can respond first and most important thing is that because we as audiovisual performers are not currently recognized under the Copyright Act then we don't have the statutory moral rights to be able to uh, basically demand or negotiate the uh, payments that uh, are tied to the international and and even national exploitation of our work we do have strong contracts within ACTRA that, uh, that allow for um, basically residual payments to be uh, paid as uh, our producer partners uh, gain monies, but there are other monies around the world that we don't have access to, and so I would say that that is, is certainly a gap um, that we're not seeing filled. How do ACTRA members get fair uh, remuneration for works that are protected by copyright? Like I say, very strong uh, contracts. We, In fact, this is our 75th year as a union representing performers, and we have long 
uh, contracts that deal with uh, residual payments and, and royalty payments, usually a producer who receives a licensing fee or, a, or, or monies, uh, we get 3.6% of that distributor's gross revenue split among all the performers in a project. Um, how, however, uh, like I say, there are other monies around the world. So for instance, we got into an agreement uh, through uh, the Performers' Rights Society, which Laurie could speak